Hello everyone, let's look at the new features and changes that Microsoft is enabling on Windows 11 2020.1362 for version 26H1. As a reminder, version 26H1 won't include any new features compared to version 25H2. It will release as a new version that will only add a specific support for upcoming chips from Qualcomm, such as the Snapdragon X2 and the NVIDIA N1X processors. Also, improvements in this release are already available in the web embedded channels, and some others that are even available in the stable channel. Okay, first, Microsoft is updating the Windows Spotlight for the desktop. So now, when using that feature, you can switch between desktop backgrounds by right clicking on the desktop and selecting the next background. You also get the Explore Background option that will open a web page on the web browser with details about that particular background. If we go to the home page for the settings sub, we're going to notice that the Game Pass card description has been updated to reflect the new branding and benefits. Now, if we go to System and then we go to Nearby Sharing, we're going to find that Microsoft is adding an option to disable the drag trade feature. So if you don't like the flyout that appears when you drag a file to the top of the screen, you can now turn it off with this toggle right here. Now, if we go to the advanced page, we're going to find that Microsoft is adding the virtual workspaces page that allows you to enable and disable virtualization features on Windows 11, including Windows Sandbox and the Hyper-V feature to create virtual machines on Windows 11. Now, if we go to Bluetooth and Devices and then Mobile Devices, we are going to find that Microsoft is integrating the mobile device settings right into the settings set. In the past, in order to control these features, you needed to use a separate page that was not integrated into the settings set. Now, from the same section, if we go to the keyboards page, in here we're going to find that Microsoft is bringing the keyboard character repeat feature from the control panel. And I believe that this page is new, which also allows you to customize the copilot key on your keyboard and the print a screen key. From here, if we go to accessibility, and then if we go to the text cursor page, we're going to find that Microsoft is also bringing the cursor blink rate feature from control panel into the settings app which includes two elements, including the option to configure the blink rate for the cursor and the preview. If we go to system, and then if we go to the recovery page, and then if we go to quick machine recovery, this is not a new feature on Windows 11. However, starting with build 28,020, that 1362 and the Canary channel, Microsoft is also updating the behavior of the recovery feature. For example, on devices, with the quick machine recovery option and the automatically check for solutions setting are turned on, the feature will now by default run the scan only once rather than running the scan in a loop. Now, you can also use the setting right here to configure the system to restart automatically to keep checking for updates on a specific interval. Also, if a resolution to the problem isn't available right away, you won't be left waiting, and Quick Machine Recovery will list all the most appropriate recovery options. Also, starting with this release, Microsoft is bringing the Xbox full screen experience to regular computers and the Canary channel, so you no longer have to use Workaround to enable the feature or purchase a new handheld device to access it. So the full screen experience transformed a traditional Windows 11 desktop into a controller-friendly and control-like interface and the primary goal is to strip away the complexity and resource overhead of a standard desktop operating system, offering a streamlined, dedicated gaming environment. When you open the full screen experience, from here you can enable the feature by selecting the Xbox app and then just turning on the option. This option is not a requirement, but you can turn it on and you'll be able to switch between the full screen experience and the desktop more easily through the task view interface. So once the feature is enabled, the device won't load the standard Windows Explorer shell and it will suppress unnecessary background processes. The company says that this experience can free up approximately up to 2GB of system.
long-distance memory. In this particular release, the company is also releasing an updated version of Ad Explorer that improves the dark mode system. And basically, you will find more elements using the dark color scheme, and that includes dialogues or confirmation states, as you can see right here, for skip override and file selection, also for multiple confirmation and error dialogues. This is in addition to the dialogues for copy, move, delete, and progress bars and charts views. However, the dark mode system for file export is still not complete, since if we go to the folders options page, we're still going to find that this particular page is still using the light mode when switching the color schemes. Also on Copilot Plus PCs, the search box description has been updated to make it more clear the capability to search in File Explorer using AI. I don't have it right here because this is not a Copilot Plus PC, but instead of saying, in this case, search images, you will see something like try describing an image or file that indicates how the capability works in search. Finally, on the homepage for File Explorer, when hovering over a file, as you can see right here, a new inline menu will appear with options such as open file location and ask copilot. Microsoft is also updating the click to do actions menu to match more closely with the design of the file explorer context menu with inline options for copy, save, share, and open. And you will also see the new copilot prompt box and content specific features. Also, if a large image or table is available on screen, the context menu will open automatically to make it easier to select an action. Also, Microsoft is finally enabling the AI agent feature for the settings app, and this is for Copilato's PCs to help you find and change settings more quickly. So now, instead of remembering a specific setting, you can describe that particular issue or a setting on the search box at the top of the screen in order to find it. For example, you can type my mouse pointer is too small. And from here, you can see that the AI agent is offering an option in order to increase the mouse cursor size automatically. And you can even change the setting right here from the search result. Also, when searching, for a setting, you will notice that the experience will now load even more settings that you can scroll through to find what you're looking for. If we go to the home page, the recommended settings card now shows inline agent actions from recently modified settings. Although the Windows Studio effects has been available for some time, they were limited to certain cameras, starting with build 28020.1362. Microsoft expanding support for more camera models and brands. In some Copal Plus PCs, the company is adding the ability to use the studio effects with secondary cameras, such as for USB webcams and built-in cameras. To enable the studio effects on additional cameras on Copal Plus PCs, you need to go to Settings, Bluetooth and Devices, Cameras, then select Secondary Camera, such as a USB webcam, and then when you click the Edit button, for the advanced camera options, you will find the option to enable the Windows Studio effects. And that's it, those were pretty much all the biggest improvements that Microsoft is enabling on the latest preview of Windows 11 and the Canary Channel. This preview also includes another handful of fixes and changes, as you can see right here, but you can also check the link in the description to get more details on all the changes for this particular release. Now, let me know in the comments what you think about these changes, like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and I just hope this video was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.